Hi everyone, welcome to our regular weekly session where we talk about all things trekking in Nepal. But today we have something slightly different for you because we are heading to Tibet. Now this is a place that's always been on my list of, it fascinates me and I'd love to go, but I haven't been there yet. Uh, Dinesh, who's my colleague, is in the middle of planning a trip for one of our clients there. So we thought today we might focus on that. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Hill. I am a business and travel coach. And I first fell in love with Nepal ooh, eight and a half years ago now when I first visited to Trek Everest Base Camp knowing absolutely nothing about what I was doing, never having done a long trek before and realising that I may have almost bitten off more than I could chew. But in the end, uh, it was a su successful trip. And uh, even though it was exhausting, it was also exhilarating. And I felt within myself uh, that it was a kickstart to some of my personal growth journey and transformation so much so that I came back a couple of years later and did Annapurna circuit uh different feelings different outcomes but still amazing exhilarating and transformational so that's part of the reason why I love to share all these things with people because to to know and understand this beautiful country and then to get out there and challenge yourself and trek around it can be an absolutely amazing experience. So now I'm going to hand over to Dinesh Kaki, who is the owner of Nature Explore Trek, and he's going to introduce himself and then we'll kick off our discussion about Tibet. Yeah. Uh, namaste and well, welcome to our uh, events. Uh, this is Dinesh Karki from Nepal, you know, where I was born and brought, uh, located in the west east part of Nepal, where the big Mount Everest is located. I spent my childhood like until I got my school living certificate that like uh, until like early my age till like 14, 15 years. Since that year age of my so I start as a supporting people in the mountains like carrying the porters I've been like uh, five six years as a uh, helping the people carrying their bags to the mountains average region everywhere where the trekking activities happened so after accomplished long experience as a supporting and then became final guide and been guiding with one of the topest label company in Tamil and Kathmandu, where the local companies are best. So been guiding like last 12 years it, all over the Nepal, like uh, Annapurna, Everest, Tibet, like West Tibet, East Tibet, and Bhutan, and India, many, many everywhere almost uh, in the Asia, especially. And after last 12 years guiding in this field, so uh, me and our, my, our team, my friends guide team, we decided to establish our own company uh, with a long experience. So last eight year, eight to nine years, we have been already run our company, Nature Export Trade. That's where Michel and I met in 2015. So yeah, after in so during this journey, we've been accomplished and getting like so many different experience and have been I have also got a great opportunity to travel in the West Europe and done some trek in the Alps. And yeah, we also specialize in the Kailas. Kailas is the west part of the uh, Tibet. <laughs> Sorry. And we're like everywhere. So in the, once we establish our company, we have we have a, we have worked with hundreds of different peoples from all around the world. And we can we are already rated in the high level with our like social network like uh, TripAdvisor, Facebook, Google. So so we are very happy and I'm very happy to my last 20 years journey to being the Neskarki mountain guide now. Thank you. That's I want to tell now. <laughs> okay. This is this is a man who lives his passion. Um, now, as I said, today, um, <clears throat> while we decided to talk about um, trekking in Tibet and the different sacred grounds and areas is that Dinesh last week was that met with a client who wants to organise a tour to Tibet for a group of people. And I just thought it was a good opportunity 
particularly um, people who may have already trekked in Nepal but want to go to Tibet and don't really understand that it's a little bit of a different style um, and there's restrictions in terms of permits and um, that the way you go about the itinerary. So perhaps the best place to start would be to walk us through a sample itinerary of what you're looking at and give us some of the reasons like why you're doing things in a particular way or why you're going to a particular place. Yeah, Tibet is up. Everyone knows that it is in the highlands of the earth. <clears throat> it is located, of course, in the, close to the mountains, right? So, of course, uh, there is a lot of opportunities for tourist activities. So, the Mount Kailas, it is in the uh, it is in the west part of the Tibet, and that's you all as you mentioned, like that. I'm uh, we have a meeting in last week in Darjeeling, in India, with our one of the leader who are planning to going with the big groups in the this June. So uh, the West Tibet, it is uh, more cultural uh, with the religions, you know, like uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, all mix. So it is like the Mount Kailash is a holy mountain. It is standing in the between the Nangjung Mao Valley. And it is the, even in the Tibet also, it is the border with the uh, other mountains. It's very ending, end of the Himalayan age. And there is like a holy lake called Manasarabar. And it is a pure, pure clean water and is really big lake and the holy Mount Kailas. So as a uh, Indijam, Buddhism and any religions believe on that, that holy mountains is nobody climbed. It is like a totally restrictions and everyone pray as a God. Like in Hinduism, they call uh, Shiva. Shiva is the holy on that mountain head. And Buddhism, they call Guru Rinpoche, who is the like uh, the person. And it is, I think I'm not going to in deep in this religion, just I'm doing a little short. And yeah. then Buddhism uh, respect Guru Rinpoche. And then other Jainism might respect same way, right? So, and then this is the reason why people traveled in Mount Kailas. It is, it is the best holy mountain and everyone believe there is a God and blessings from there. And the Mount, and then the Manasarabur Lake, it is a holy pure water as believed. Uh, the god Shiva or god uh, Guru Rinpoche or any of the respected gods who live in that uh, holy land, who we'll, we'll have a body up there. So they, they do the uh, like sour meditation in that water. And the pilgrimage, especially from India, from Nepal, from all over the world, uh, they will travel to uh, Kailas, west part of Tibet, I mean. So they all, every time when they go, who go first time even, they take a shower in that cold water as they're believing, they're getting like a relief, you know, like something, blessings from there. And from the uh, lake, they can see the Mount Kailas as they're praying, you know. So it's been, uh, as I'm experienced and been working uh, with big groups and big numbers of people, the most of them came from India for this kind of trip as they are Hindus. And then from Tibet as a Buddhist. And then uh, minimized number from Nepal also. And of course, all over, all over the world, especially foreigners, people. And then the Mount Kailas, best time to go is uh, start from an, April to end of the November. The winter is not a good time because it is the uh, it's snowing and cold. So it is, and then uh, December, January, February, March is uh, the tourism is closed in Tibet as the not favorable weather, right? So this is about west, uh, west part of Tibet and Mount Kailas. So if we go another part east of the Tibet, it's especially capital city of Tibet called Lhasa. It is the capital city of uh, Tibet and where is the, the Dalai Lama of Potala Palace also located in the same city. So this, this city is like uh, Lhasa, Sigatse and these things and then west more uh, remote villages in the west part of Tibet. It is more culturally reaching monasteries, uh, religions and old, uh, uh, old uh, Tibetan villages. Before uh, before China uh, hand over the countries, they have like a lot of uh, properties, you know, a lot of heritage. So the people who travel in the uh, cultural trip, cultural trip is even the shorter one, just for five four days or 10, 10 to 11 days, any numbers of days, uh, travels are available as your timetable and, you know, like as your flexibility. So if you do, if you want to do just cultural, not the long trip as Kailas, so you can also travel to Lhasa, and in the Lhasa, there, there are so many things to see, like uh, Potala Palace, Bakur Monastery, Jankar Temple. Those are the popular uh, 
uh, names. And then you can also go to further to west to the Sigaze city. Sigaze is another city, biggest city after the uh, Lhasa. And then from the uh, from the Sigaze, you can also visit the Everest Base Camp from the Tibet side. It is elevation like 5,000 over. So you don't have to walk in Tibet as a road is already reached near the mountain, Mount Base Camp, Mount Everest Base Camp from Tibet side. And then you have a good view and then you can come down to the, uh, repeat the same cities. And you can also explore the more Eastern part of the Tibet. Like uh, I have not uh, remember all these names, but <laughs> still I can tell like uh, Sami. And there is so many opportunities for trekking and exploration. So Tibet is highland and rich in the culture, monasteries. Uh, East, Eastern part is more Buddhism than Hinduism, you know? So because of there is the, as we knew already, like many hundreds and thousands years ago, there is the, the, the habitation of Buddhism. And this is like Dalai Lama King Palace. That means Dalai Lama was the leader. And after the fighting with China and Dalai Lama is he used to live in India now, but he still he loved and his pilgrimage are still happening there. And so many activities are going on Buddhism. But uh, the cities and the places um, becoming modern as the Chinese China is developing, investing a lot of uh, money, and then they became like modern cities. But still, things we have many things to see. So to get to Tibet from Nepal, you have many options. So you have choice. Like if you want to go by land, there is there are a few borders are available. The name called Kerung. It is the north of the Kathmandu, the capital city of Nepal, and another it is called Kodari. Kodari is just, it was the, the popular border before uh, earthquake and uh, earthquake and this, uh, before earthquake, when the earthquake in 2015 in Nepal, the landsliding and the, the road was broken, that it was totally uh, blocked because of the no immigration office, anything was uh, landsliding and problem. But uh, from this year, they, they're planning to starting. So it might be also open for the, from by land. And if you want to go by slide, can yeah. I just ask a question here? So if we're going from Kathmandu um, by road, how how long would you be in the Jeep or the bus for? Like, is it a one day or two days or three days or? Yeah, thank you. Um, by If you want to go by, uh, by road, let's, for example, from Nepal, from Kathmandu, we need one day to take the, to, one day drive to border. Nepal and Tibet friendship bridge, where are the borders? And once we clearance immigrations in the like our visas and anything, and still we need like to get to Mount Kailas, it, it takes minimum uh, three days driving because of, uh, you know, like every day you will drive like five to 600 meters. Someday it might be 1000 kilometers also. The road is very nice if you go in the West Tibet, okay? So if you go to East Tibet to Lhasa things, it will be two days. From after the border, but before we start our journey, we need time to prepare in time to prepare for our packing and then visa because China visa getting China visa is very difficulty. They're making it quite complicated as you have to be yourself to the embassy for biometric, and you need to have to wait like a couple of days to get your paper visa. Normally, they will not stamp the visa in the, your passport. They will give you in the paper the the group visa. So not, they minimize, they require four or five people. You cannot even travel individually, east or west, Tibet, no matter. And uh, it takes at least uh, for express visa. If you have also available facilities for express visa, those people who have a short time, you can, you can get in three days with paying extra money. And those who have time and want to get normal visa, it takes four days. In from Kathmandu, if you're applying from Kathmandu at Chinese embassy, okay? So, but people, right. you can also apply from your home hometown country. But before you apply your visa, you need a document and invitation letter from uh, Lhasa agency. So those are, we are from Nepal agency, but we cannot work on documentary all in Tibet because it is another country. So we have to hire another agency in local agency from Lhasa or anywhere. So those agency will send us the invitation letter according to your name list, like according to your proposal and itinerary and all the accommodation confirmations, and then we can apply the visa in Chinese embassy. So that means it takes three, four days up when you get the visa, and then you will start your journey. So if you go by land, it takes one day to get border, overnight you will stay there, and then uh, then after a couple of days to get Lhasa by land. Uh, and then if you go to the west in the uh, Mount Kailas area, it takes three days only to get to the base camp, 
and then when you do the Mount Kailas is standing in here, just for this, just think this is Mount Kailas, okay? So okay. you will be reaching here by drive, and then you, you can have an opportunity to, you can walk in this parikrama, like circle. So oh, there is okay. there, there are road also, but most of the pilgrimage and all the travelers, they, they walk by themselves. You know, but if you feel not to walk, you can still get like hire the horse, rent a horse, and then also there is like some uh, emergency jeep pick up or anything it's like, but not not a proper road for around the mountain class as they want to keep this part safe for the all the tourists that who want to walk and want to see the, around the mountain class, right? When you cross before before you get from this valley to another side of the valley, you have to ha you have a here the high pass. It is called Dolmala Pass, which is a five thousand six hundred meter high pass. Ooh. So that is quite challenging to get on top and then go down yeah. on the side of the hill. And, mm. and then you wherever you start your your uh, track like parikrama we say parikrama like kora it's short circuit so you will end your same same spot so it right. is three days three days program right so so most of uh, rest uh, except this walk you most of time you will be driving even in kailas also okay and then if you go to the eastern in lassa side so you will most of time you will be in overland if you don't choose the like other trekking other alternative routes so you will be sitting in the van or car, and then they will they will drive as sightseeing, like domestic tours, right? But it's really beautiful. Lhasa is like three thousand eight hundred meter high altitude, and Mount Kailas is if we if I say the the Mount altitude of top of the summit of Mount Kailas, it is six thousand four hundred meter high, but nobody climbed. It is fully mountain and restricted, and yeah. most of the time we will be driving around like four thousand five hundred. Up and down, you know, 4,500, 4,400, 4,600. 4, and then only the pass, it's called itself is 5,600. Yeah. So this is the like a. a Can I ask one, one more please. question? Please. Um, yeah. So if if you're driving and, you know, the altitude is around, say, four and a half thousand meters, um, I know like when you walk, um, you know, you always have the possibility of altitude sickness and you can be affected by the altitude. When you're driving, are you less likely to actually get altitude sickness, but you still feel like the shortness of breath because you're mm -hmm. up so high? Uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, yes or no, because the, the, both questions come. Because when you are not moving, you're just sitting in car, you have, of course, you have a comfortable but that you are not expense your energy. Yeah, but it, altitude is not no, even you walk or not. When you go in high, you can get it. But that's the reason we have like we have up the three four days preparation in Kathmandu, right? You have a like Kathmandu is like one thousand three hundred meter altitude. The people who come from sea level, they will be staying in Kathmandu a couple of days, you know. Like even like when they they are they have time three days to get wait visa, they can also do a small hike here. Also, when that's people what I was are just going to say, like when you're waiting in Kathmandu for your visa. You could do day trips and hike up yeah. a little bit and then come back down, couldn't you? It's yeah. also opportunity. And then when we're doing this kind of tour, we we're not driving whole day, you know, like like for 24 hours. We just that's the reason we have like a uh, itinerary break. The first day you go just a little bit jump, and then we have a one or couple of days acclimatization day. So that means you have like rest day, you know, like that the purpose of uh, digest the altitude. And then you know the and of course. The people, someone who planned for this trip, so we already advise them to have good preparation mentally and physically. That means uh, the physically you have to prepare like a cardiovascular or yoga, running, like as a prepare for the trek, you know. Yeah. So that means it also helps you a lot. And mental means it is the remote area of countryside. So of course you're out of comfort zone from you. So you might meet, encounter some remote places for overnight staying and facing the some situations and weather. So if you are both preparations, mentally and physically, this tour is possible. Nothing is impossible. Yeah, because I, when I did Annapurna circuit, um, when we go through Thoronga Pass, that's like 5,400 meters, I think, from memory. Um, And yeah, when you said 5,600, I thought that that's, not not necessarily a tough ask, but but it is it is a uh, a process and it can be like a slow process to get through and go through that sort of altitude as well. Yeah, it is it is very important. That's the reason 
uh, when we, as my company, and uh, we do like a different, different style than in the market, like we have a professional team who have been doing this job like 20 years. That meant we are well trained about basic first aid. And mm. then we need well information about the reason that we have like friends who have been working together and we understand the local language and there is like emergency hospitals and things. We are like, normally when we plan kind of this trip, we are, we are normally prepared, even ourselves also. So we're not just receiving, receiving the people and giving the document and send. So that means we have like both countries, our teams and partnerships are working very well. So we know, when you plan someone, you know, like then we also we start to get ready, you know, like that means we have a big responsibility to send the people in the high mountains and get them back as safety, you know. So yeah. safety and security is our high prior and concern. So we always make sure everything. And this, I just want to add a little bit, you know, like let's yeah. say if someone got altitude, so what, what is the alternative, right? This this might be another question. So, so you know, like the, the first medicine is you have to you have to die, try to digest yourself, right? That means let's say if you receive a little bit symptoms of high altitude, like vomiting, DG, and like kind of like fatigue, you know, anything. So we, we always suggest to drink more water, take a rest. And for example, if we got early symptoms, we're not moving like going further, you know? So we yeah. wait a little bit, right? Then after, if you if it is going better, then that's fine. And we also, in the meantime, we also have a medicine called Dimox. So it is the high altitude tablets. So we, we, we start to giving you. Yeah. So you have to try to digest yourself. If you cannot, then we start to give medicines. And if even doesn't, get better then the first medicine is descent like for example if you are like you know in uh, 4000 meter at least you have to come down like 3000 meter or like 3500 meter that will be relieve your uh, altitude symptoms or anything right and if in case if you get not better even you know high altitude symptoms i just this is not a, not a easy you know when people start to get so at that time we have like a lot of alternative options there is like Hospitals close and hospitals in close around, you know, it is not well, we will be not in the wild like long time. There is like some villages, uh, local medicines and hospitals. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, for example, if I got like altitude, so, and they're not getting better, there is like some uh, medicines and then we trek down, drive back down to Kathmandu or any, any lower part of the uh, uh, area. So that will be, you will help and you will get better. That's I want to like a little bit information. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned also that um, the season is only open. What did you say? Was it April or May through to November? Yes. Yeah. Um, not not, so, not later so, than November. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's kind of over your monsoon hot weather time. So if if I was traveling and doing a tour with you in Tibet, say in June. Like, would I need still need lots of warm gear, or is it is it quite mild, or what what kind of things would I actually need to take with me? Yes, it is. It is summer in Kathmandu, right mm -hmm. in Nepal. But in Tibet, it is still summer. We are in the same season, but yeah, you are going in the mountain, right? As we yeah. talk talking about like a highland, like five thousand meter and close to the Himalayas. So yeah. of course. During the daytime, when you're sitting on a car or a van, a bus, so you might not feel that cold. But when you go in the morning and evening for a photograph or like walking around, you will feel chill. So we, we always suggest take your full gear. Like full gear yeah. means like your down jacket, what I'm wearing, because you're still end of the winter in Kathmandu. It's summer here. <laughs> and then beanies, sunglasses, sun creams, walking sticks, uh, pairs of warm trousers, uh, good boots is very important. It's good boots, comfortable, I mean, and pairs of sweaters who cover your neck, you know, and gloves, waterproof gloves, water windproof gloves, and uh, woolly, woolly socks will give you the wood protect warmer your feet and uh, pair, maybe one pair of uh, sports shoes whenever you're not walk and you're sitting around so you can use them mm -hmm. and good backpack like day backpack, day backpack means like uh, most of the time your small bag will stay with your important things like camera, documents and your money, budget. And then the, another the duffel bag, like big bag, whatever your equipment will be converted in that bag where you take all round. Important, the, the equipment is very important, especially when you go to Mount Kailas. As you're yeah. walking three days and yeah. as you are like traveling like many days in the high altitude, 
So Ikukmin is high, uh, high important and high suggestions. And if you do in the short, and also it is depends on how long you're going, right? If you go yeah. for two weeks, you need accordingly the many layers. So if you just go for four, four five days in just for short city sightseeing, so you don't need much. So accordingly, we saw this. And for example, Michelle, if you book your trip to Kailas with your team, so we, we send you all details, not only like this is not again, right? So right. we send you like the file and file, like maybe 40 page of file, which is take you to guide, take you through the okay. guidance, how to prepare. Yeah. yeah. And what about the 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 type and the style of accommodation? Is it like the tea houses when you trek in Nepal? Yes. But not every places. But yeah. that means we're not sleeping tent. It's still there is a, uh, like remote places, there is still uh, like guest houses. It's more yeah. guest houses. It's like not like a proper one. Yeah. Some some cities like Darsin uh, and Lhasa, Sigache. And in, in the cities place, there is the three star to five star hotel are available as per budget. Yeah. And like in Lake Manasarwa that I talked, you know, like Lake and then the Mount Kailas Parikrama, when we do it. These areas are remote and as government land, they're not allowed to build many nice hotel. So that case you will sleep in the basic guest houses and then sharing the beds, sorry, sharing, sharing the room. And in the one room, there is like few beds. So where you will share with other, your group, group friend, not, not other people, just your friend. Let's, yeah. let's hope we all get on. <laughs> <laughs> like at least they, they ask you to sleep like four people in one yeah. room. That means you have I separate that's, that's but sharing the room. Yeah. <laughs> and the toilet is outside. So, yeah. you okay. know, in our big group, as we are organizing many groups, even in this season, so yeah. we put in this area, we take our own tent, toilet tent. Like we have a small toilet tent and okay. port, yep. and then we take and we, we, we for facilities, we, we try to adjust kind of things. Okay. So Tibet is dirt, you know, like in the some places. So it might be not clean as you expect. So we have like try to adjust something for this okay. situation. So in the so in the cities it's okay, but um, it could get a bit down and dirty when we get out. That's I I try to tell you. <laughs> in the cities like uh, Lhasa, Sigaji, yeah, yeah. Now is there <laughs> is there anything else that um, you wanted to mention or John and Lauren? Is there any comments or questions that you guys have that you wanted yeah. to? Yeah, well we're we're planning. Uh, we're doing the Annapurna Circuit Trail in September 2025. Okay, cool. So we're prepared. We, 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 Sorry, I can't, a, when you turned away, I couldn't hear you. Yes, uh, we're already booked. And, you know, we have a guide service and a porter. Um, we do a lot of backpacking. We're from the U.S., um, the northeast part of the U.S., which the high mountain there is um, a little over 2,000 meters. So it's not that high. <laughs> same same um, for me. Same for me. Yeah, yeah. So we're, <laughs> we actually live nine months out of the year in the Philippines. And there's some mountains here that get up to about um, 3,000, a little over 3,000 meters. Yeah. Um, so what we're looking at doing over the next, um, you know, year and a half, um, we're looking at trying to prepare for the altitude sickness. Um, yeah. you know, getting, trying to be in the best shape um, and prepare for it because the it sounds like the going over the pass on the Annapurna circuit trail can be a little a little bit um it is john but it's one of those things where um as long as you listen to your body and you do you and don't try and keep up with anyone or let anyone else dictate your pace it's quite doable um we afterwards we laughed and we said it was like doing the zombie walk because everyone was just kind of shuffling along <laughs> and then you'd stop and take a deep breath and you didn't really want to talk that much because you wanted to hang on to your breath. <laughs> yeah, so, we, 
we so when we got to the pass, it was like, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> but but also that, you know, that fabulous sense of achievement. Yep, yes. We have a uh, guide service, and that was one of the things we looked for, is a guide service where we could just go at our own pace. Yeah. Actually doing the 18-day. So yeah. we're not we're not going to push it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Very they take sensible. the break. I forgot the community or the area, but they take a, a day's break at about, I think it's around eight, 9,000 feet. They stop for a day just so you mm. can begin to acclimate. Yeah. Um, but our goal, you know, now, like I said, we do quite a bit of backpacking. Um, and, but our goal is to, is preparation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that we well that's can, very exciting for you to look forward to. Yeah, yeah we're looking very forward. We're, we're, we okay. live nine months out of the year in the Philippines here. Uh, we live about high, but it's about 2,000 feet is yeah. where our house is here. In the Philippines. So well, we're I, sea level, but we're not very high. I live at sea level. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> and um, I just, I did a trek last year in the middle of Australia and, you know, they're talking about the big mountains in the area, you know, <laughs> 1,800 metres and 2,000 metres. And I'm like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. not, not um, too much. Now, now, guys, obviously, as you said, you've already booked with, oh, Dinesh has just dropped off. Um, sometimes his internet pays up. Um, yep. But like. We're always here if, if like, we we try to run reasonably regular um, events like this, um, and we do have um, we have done a couple of it, uh, events where we talk specifically about Annapurna and Annapurna Circuit. Would you like me to send you the link so that you could watch those videos? Yes. Yeah, that would yes, that would be great. Yeah, because as I said, I I completely respect the fact that you have booked already with somebody but but we are here if you have any questions or you know and no question is too insignificant or no question is silly because yeah. you know when as when, when you do stuff like I did where I just got on a plane and went to Nepal and knew absolutely nothing about what I was doing you guys are way ahead of me no, we're as much as possible so that we can enjoy it as much as possible. We want to really get into the culture of Nepal. Yeah. Each time you turn away from the camera, I can't hear you very well, John. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we might wrap it up there. Um, Dinesh, do you have anything that you would like to add? Uh, no, everything is fine. I just want to add one line. So as we're talking only... Just, I just come take you back to the Kailash things, okay? Sorry, because yes. I want to complete, even if someone watched this video, I have to mention that part also. Yep. So so I, we are just talking more about by going by land, okay? So if one if someone will go by flight, there is also a possibility from Kathmandu to Lhasa, okay? So you, you can also do by flight also. That's I want to add. Yeah, uh, I, I thought yeah. you could, but um, most of the stuff that I have read has all been about um, yeah. by road, so... Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you guys for joining us. Lovely to meet you. Um, and if you're watching this video and you would like some more information, there will be some contact information um, either below or in a comment somewhere or just reach out to us individually. And uh, we will be back next week with a topic that we haven't even decided on yet. So stay tuned and um, you and I will both be surprised to see what happens next week. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.